Hey, hey, Brent. Hey. How you doing, man? Good, you? Right on. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for, uh, thanks for taking some time here and uh, joining the podcast in Vancouver, Canada. God's country. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, man. It's, uh, of course, um, man, I've been a fan of the Vancouver Canucks for, yeah, I grew up in Surrey. I went to elementary yeah. school in Surrey and, you know, make the drive in and, and see the boys at the Coliseum and, of course, throughout yeah. the years. And so I, uh, I followed your career, um, well, the whole time, man, the whole time. So uh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, we're obviously going to get into a bunch of hockey and stuff, but I'm, I'm wondering how's, how's your camp? How's your family and stuff dealing with the COVID-19? Uh, Are you guys going stir crazy yet? Uh, you know, it's not really the COVID now. We're, I don't know if you guys know all the rioting that's going on here in, uh, in yes. the U.S. That is scary because, dude, it's not just in like one area. It's like everywhere. Yeah, so that's what I that's what I'm dealing with right now. Um, I'm home right now to uh, to do with it, do this with you, and then I'm heading back to my girlfriend's. Um, her three kids watch uh, watch the house over there, uh, close to my kids. But yeah, every parking lot to malls shut down. I can know I can know that mall. It's you know a kilometer away, and it's surrounded by cops. Wow, just scary, right? Like. Yeah. And not only that, Brent, but the COVID-19 is still around. So now you have people looting and lighting cars on fire that are like clearly not social distancing. <laughs> yeah, there's not it's, a lot of social distancing going on around here anymore. It's um, insane, man. Like everybody's had, had enough of it. So yeah. um, it's everybody's it's starting to get nicer. Everybody's just forget it. Yeah. Well, best of luck uh, down there, man. I mean, literally sure. in Canada, it's just like, pff, wow. Yeah, it's a different animal living up here than where, you know, that what you guys to deal with. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So what was, uh, what is your first hockey memory? My first hockey memory? Oh, you know, being on the outdoor rink. No yeah. Question. Yeah, you know, it's growing up in Saskatchewan, you, there's an outdoor rink just about every, uh, at every school. So you could find an outdoor rink somewhere. Uh, at all times and that's where i spent my life and, and how old were you when you when you first laced them up uh two you're two yeah just a little guy yeah and uh when did you realize that like i'm good enough to do this i don't know if i you know ever did you know i was a i was always a guy that uh, you know a slower skater and you know i always had to prove people wrong so I don't know if there's ever a time where I said, you know, uh, you know, I can do this. It was, you know, uh, major triple A and going up to the WHL and getting drafted. It was just, a, you know, I always had to earn that spot and had to prove a lot of people wrong to, to earn that spot. So um, it probably, it probably never did, you know, and <laughs> I was always looking over my shoulder for the next guy coming, you know, that's right. just the, of the business. Yeah. And, uh, of course, never did win a cup with the Vancouver Canucks, but you hoisted it with the Chicago Blackhawks. Talk about hoisting the Stanley Cup, dude. Well, you know, obviously, you know, one in a million times on the outdoor rink, and it's a, a dream come true. So, um, to be able to, to know that my name's on there and uh, part of a special, special group when there's so many amazing players that played this game in the NHL that never got an opportunity to win. And Talk about uh, some of the players that you played with in Vancouver that you were like, man, they're just, you know, like big, big players, man. Watching these guys, you must have just been, I mean, how awesome is it to play with players like that? Well, you know, when that's, uh, uh, that's part of the game, it's, it's you know, uh, Vancouver, we had some amazing players, you know, that's uh, Bertuzzi, Aslan, Morrison line was just, you know, the nothing, train, man. Look out. The train, nothing but spectacular to be able to be a part of and watch. And, you know, we, we had some special teams there. Just, to, you know, came up short a couple times. And, you know, I thought you know, we had definitely had an opportunity to, to do some damage. But there's a reason why it's the hardest trophy in all four major sports to win. I was just going to say that. They say that it's the hardest, and oh, yeah. clearly it is. Well, yeah, you know, when you've got to win 16 games, you know, you've got – uh, you know, obviously NFL with three playoff games in there, then, you know, so 
Yeah. It's a, it's a grind. Um, their body takes a beating after 82 games. So, But like I said, to, to be able to win it and hoist it, knowing my name's on there is pretty special. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And um, uh, before COVID shut the world down, which teams were – now, obviously, they're going to – and what do you think about the abbreviated uh, um, playoffs? I think it's stupid. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan either. You know, it's uh, – I understand why it's all – you know, it, that's the business side of that that the fans don't understand. That's all about the money and the marketing dollars and stuff that Gary doesn't want to uh, <clears throat> give back and make himself look bad. So right, Gary's right. always making so, – got to make himself look good. And you're, you're ruining two seasons just for one. You know, COVID-19 was a, a pandemic through the whole world, not just in, in North America and China and Russia. It was everywhere. Every single country was so affected. So if there's a blank on the Stanley Cup, you know, you, that's fine. Nobody ever anticipated, saw any of this. You know, um, it was a quick, you know, what are you supposed to do? It's... Uh, it is what it is. You know, nobody wanted to see all these people die. You'd rather be playing, playing the game, you know, playing Major League Baseball, playing Stanley Cup playoffs right now than, you know, watching all the doctors on the front line doing what they're doing. And regardless, you say, well, it's going to be either it's a, a blank or it gets those little asterisks. And, and as a Canuck fan, I know that we're going to fucking win this year. And it's going to be that, like, the asterisk year of the COVID, yep. you know? Like, and that's what it was going to be. Did you, did you really win? No, you know, it'll never, you know, you won, but you'll never really think you won. You right. know, you didn't go through the whole grind of, uh, you know, mid-April to, to mid-June. Um, you know, you went through the COVID grind. Right. Still a grind, but it's not the full grind. That's right. why the asterisks, right? I don't right. want the asterisks. I want the win, man. Yeah. All right, Brent, uh, talk to us about your foundation, uh, brentsopelfoundation.org. Yeah, I started my foundation uh, a couple of years ago. You know, I found out 10 years ago that I'm dyslexic. And, uh, you know, through that, you know, through my struggles, uh, I decided to, you know, start my own foundation. And a lot of it's for, for advocating and, uh, you know, helping get teachers trained in Wilson Reading and Orton Gillingham. And, but, you know, um, I was saying it to change the world, but before I could do that, I can educate. I got to educate the world. I only think about 20% of the population actually know what dyslexia is. And what's the percentage, do you know, offhand of the people that actually are dyslexic? My brother, my older brother is for sure. Yeah, it's, it's one in five. So one in 20%. Five, 20% of the people. And it's hereditary. So autism is one in 65 and not hereditary. Hmm. So, when it's, it, you know, you just keep passing on, you know, keeps going and going and going. So it's, it's not going anywhere. It's uh, you know, something that you're born with. You can't take a shot or a pill or anything. It is what it is. Hmm. So are you, are you raising money? Is there a way for that to be fought? Like, how do they, how do they fight this? Well, yeah, you know, I'm obviously raising money so that I can advocate for these kids. And, you know, when you're talking about uh, 20% of the population, it doesn't matter what, uh, where you're from. It doesn't race, gender, sex. It doesn't matter if you're Russian or Chinese or Japanese or, or you know, Canadian. It, it affects everybody. So, you know, I'll raise the money so I'm able to, to go to schools and able to advocate for these kids and get them to uh, understand what, uh, you know, what their goals are and what their strengths and weaknesses are. And uh, I've been up the White House speaking, you know, a couple times and going to go cool. back up there whenever I can get back up there with everything going on. How are you with the public speaking? Is that because a lot of people are like, man, I'd rather just take a bullet. No, I, you know, that's part of my dyslexia. Yeah, I could, you know, stand in crowds of, you know, two to, you know, thousands. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. So nice. Um, you know, God gave me a gift to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay, Brent, I'd like to get outside of uh, hockey and, of course, what you're known for. Everybody knows you for hockey, but let's get into who Brent Sopel is. Um, seems we have a bunch of time on our hands right now, or at least we did. We're so slowly yeah. getting back to normal, somewhat normal or whatever that's going to be like. What have you been binge watching lately? You know what? I, I haven't, uh, haven't been binge watching much. Um, I played in Russia for three years in the KHL. So, um, I binge watched that over there for, you know, three years. So, um, I'm not watching a lot of TV. 
you know, I'm, I'm keeping busy, you know, with my foundation. I do a lot of stuff with uh, addiction and mental health. And so I'm speaking to a lot of people uh, on the phone during, you know, during the day and the evenings to this COVID has really um, affected people in, in, you know, a negative way with the mental health. So I do that a lot. Not a lot of uh, TV. For, I don't even have cable. No, no way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I didn't have cable for ages and then uh, now i got older kids so they want to watch the canucks so yeah, yeah. dad you got to get cable like why don't we have cable what's going yeah. on um what um what was the music in the soul Bowl house like as a kid growing up like what are the bands that your parents are playing oh i gotta go back to the uh, oh geez I gotta go way back. Then now that's really date. That's really dated me. Digging into get, the cobwebs here. Gotta get the vinyls out. Totally. <laughs> you know, my parents. You know, my parents were big music people. They weren't big. No, no, no they didn't have. You know, uh, in you know, in the vehicles that was, but uh, there wasn't a lot of music playing on at home. Me, you know, that's completely. It's a different story. I love, I love my music, and um, you know, it's a part of me, but. Uh, I don't know if they were too cheap to buy vinyls or what it was. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm interested. Uh, I've been asking this question lately of my guests. Um, it's the deserted island question. You're, you're stuck on a deserted island. Which three albums do you need? Which three albums? Oh, Tragically Hip. Yes. Uh, Metallica. Ooh, which one? I don't know, either do I go with Master Puppets or do I go Inner Sandman? Yeah, can't, can't, can't go wrong with either, I guess. Yeah, and then uh, I like what, what's over your uh, right shoulder. Oh, some Rage door. or Zap. Love Rage. Love we were, Rage. They were, supposed to be here, they were supposed to be here in Chicago three weeks ago. Yeah, man. I mean, so many oh, shows, so many tours just postponed. Like postponed for like, dude, like like a year. Or and, two. And that's, that's optimistic. Or two. Yeah, or, or two or three or four. Who, like, who knows how long it's going to take? You know, nobody knows. Well, they were tossed around the idea. Live Nation were, were tossed around the idea of, like, a drive-in. Like, you go see yeah. Rage, but, a, but out of, a, you know, a drive-in. And yeah. however that works, you maybe get a board feed into your car and you can kind of mess with the volume. For I don't know how that would work, but yeah. what a weird way to see a show, though. I don't know if I'm – I don't know about that. No, I uh... – I don't know, you know, really now, you know, you talk about the, that and you get the four major sports coming up here, you know, golf's got no fans. NASCAR's got no fans. You got NBA is coming up here, baseball, you know, are they going to be playing with fans? Are they not going to be playing with fans? And, and what a weird way to, to play, like as a pro athlete, like, could you imagine oh. play, right? Like how weird oh, is that? It's, it's same for like, you know, are you a fan of UFC? Like UFC fights, like not yeah. like nobody in the, like nobody, it's nobody, just two dudes fighting. Yeah. I, I can do that in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> you know, you know, in, in Stanley cup playoffs, you're going to be playoff with empty buildings. Like, uh, yeah, I, I just, I'm not a big fan of it all. I, you know, that's the business side of things that everybody doesn't understand, but yeah. uh, I don't like, I don't like anything about it. Yeah, it's a, it's an odd world for sure. Are you a fan of all the uh, superhero movies that are being made, like X Men and Wonder Woman, Suicide Squad, Never, and all that? I haven't seen one. Oh no way! You know, you know, it's a uh, um, don't want you know don't want to watch a lot of TV. You know, obviously comics were my thing because I couldn't read. So yeah. um, I just you know I don't watch a lot of movies. I don't rent movies. I uh, with my dyslexia, I like to watch the same thing over and over and over again. So I never, I can't remember last time I saw, I rented a movie or saw a movie. So, wow. uh, you know, you know lead a little bit of a different life. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, they've, uh, of course, shown videos recently of uh, UFOs and that they're real. And that kind of just, you know, it flew under the radar, so to speak. Do you think that aliens yeah. have visited Earth? No. 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 That is not, that is not even... Not right, up for discussion. That beat. Right. Who's somebody talking about that the other day? I'm like, absolutely not. No, you get a lot of different opinions, man. I'll tell you. Well, you know, here in the states, we've got 335 million people, so um, we got a lot of opinions. You know, but you can't make everybody happy. And, you know, 
I live by myself and I still can't make myself happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Brent, I want to respect your time, man. Thank you again for, for doing this. I've got a couple more uh, questions and I'll, and I'll yep. let you go here. Sounds good. Uh, what's your take on legalized marijuana? Came to Canada about a year <laughs> and a half ago? You know, there's two, you know, obviously being part of uh, uh, addiction and uh, you have been sober for, you know, creeping up almost four years of knock on wood. Um, obviously, you know, medical marijuana is great. You know, it can do some major benefits for, uh, you know, for patients and pain and uh, um, used in the right way. I just, the hard part is that, you know, kids think that it's, you know, it's okay, you know, to be smoking pot at a young age and, you know, it's, it's clinically proven that it's a gateway drug from, you know, 14 to 22 because the brain's still developing. So the developmental uh, part. Yeah. yeah. So as a, uh, you know, as a, uh, an alcoholic and guy did a lot of drugs and, you know, that part is a, a hard part to, to get across to kids when they, Oh, it's legal. And that's not legal, but you know, so, um, but for the medical side of things, you know, uh, from what I know and the people that use it, uh, it's wonders. Yeah. And, uh, of course the CBD oil, um, from that, I mean, that's, that's another world in it on its own. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, right now there's no regulations on it though. You know, it's, uh, that, I think that's, uh, that's the next thing to be, you know, get some regulations on that CBD oil and you know what exactly, uh, is being created because you really don't know, um, you know, what concentrate or how it's, how it's being made because there's no uh, re- regulations on it. Right, right. Uh, last question. It's an oddball question. You're like, dude, you've already thrown me uh, a few. <laughs> I'm an oddball, so it's good. Uh, have you ever had a near-death experience? Like, not necessarily where you're floating over your body or whatever, going to a light. More like, holy crap! Well, you died there. You know, I uh, I had a lot of them. You know, obviously, I was drinking, and you know, I retired from game hockey. I was, you know, drinking alcoholic, a lot of drugs, and did a lot of stupid things and surprisingly, you know, I, I'm alive through, you know, through all that, but, um, having to go to rehab and, um, sitting in the, my first, um, a meeting and guy starts talking about, uh, about his past and it was exactly like mine. And, you know, it was a God shot that, uh, I've never heard anybody talk about the same story as me, you know, and I just sat there blank for the next 45 minutes. Don't know what was said. I just thought, you know, sitting back thinking of all the drinking and driving and all the, you know, the stupid things that, uh, that I did. And thankfully God was watching over me that I didn't kill somebody or kill myself or, or anything like that. Wow. Do you still go to meetings? regularly well you know obviously with COVID there's there's no meetings and I haven't been to a meeting in a couple of years um well because I counsel um you know, six or seven different people oh you know um all over all over North America so um that's like that's like a meeting in itself so I'm doing three four five meetings a day wow it, re- it really sounds like you've um uh, you know not, not to be cliche or or whatnot but it, it really sounds like you've turned a page since the hockey days and kind of are, are looking to better not only your life, but you know, the people around you, man, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, I definitely turned the page from the game of hockey, you know, a lot of goods, you know, but I had a lot of bads, a lot of pain went with it and, you know, uh, life after hockey, I'm in the real world now. And, um, you know, I'm trying to change the world, you know, through the dyslexics, you know, for every kid out there struggling and, um, that's my goal. You know, hockey gave me a platform to speak, but now I want my foundation. Uh, that's what I want to be recognized. Well, you're well on your way, dude. That's uh, it's pretty amazing. It's and in fact, it's the, one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, first and foremost was the Vancouver Canucks of, you know, your, your hockey season, you know, your hockey career, but, uh, knowing about what you're doing as well. That's why I kind of reached out and was like, Hey man, yeah. you want you want to be a, a quick guest? Yeah, I appreciate so, it. Thank you for, for taking the time. By the way, um, are you on uh, uh, Twitter? Is that you, at Brent underscore Sopel? Yeah. That is you. We, we got to get you verified, man. Verse. Yep. Yeah, okay. You know what? I, I've tried. I, you know, I've tried to get verified in all of them, and they won't do it. Really? No. I don't know why. That's really odd. I know for Twitter that you need to 
have the birthday filled out. Yeah, so same, your- same, Instagram, same way, but mm-hmm. they won't verify me. I don't know. I've tried. Uh, I'm, I'm going to chirp them off. I'm going to get some of my followers to chirp them off. Be like, Perfect. this is freaking Brent Sopel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm verified already. Give me a break. All right, Perfect. Brent. Thank, thanks All right. again, man. No problem. Take care. We'll see you online. All right, we'll do.